and welcome to the stage, Sugar Ray! Chili a couple of years later and she said Mark you know we wrote that song about you <laughs> and that hurt for like five seconds and then there was an icon at number one in 99 an icon just a living legend man. and she wrote a song with a little bit of an auto-tune thing that went through and that song was Mm 
as much share as you're going to make me sing. So Cher was number one, man. TLC was number two and Cher was number one because 99 was about, hey, lady! <laughs> but because of you guys, this little song snuck in at number three. And we're forever grateful. It's called Someday, and it goes a little something like this. Let's not call this song what you want to call it. He goes, why? He said to me, he goes, because it's a bit of a self-fulfilling prophecy. Yeah, me too. I didn't know what that meant. I'm like, that's a lot of words I don't know. That must be really good, right, Rodney? And he goes, no, but proceed at your own risk. And that's why Sugar Ray's last hit song is called Oh, when it's over. Here we go. Here we go. to be, but I'd like to do it a cappella right now, how it was meant to be. So if you could just uh, kindly have your attention, and if I could just have some quiet in the room, it would mean a lot to me. Thank you. Somebody once told me the world is kind of wrong. Hey. I said just me, bass boy. Oh look, the good-looking Australian decides to play along. <laughs> we love Smash Mouth so much. We can't even we're we're Sugar Ray and we play Smash Mouth songs. What is my love? <laughs> is that you again? Oh my god. <laughs> By the way, do me a favor, give it up for our good friends in Smash Mouth. I love that band. And I'm super glad I could write a hit song for them when they needed one. Don't even Google, I didn't do it. I didn't do it. <laughs> but Christian, you played bass for Smash Mouth for a cup of coffee, right? Oh, now you're Australian. Now he's the Australian shy guy, like, who can it be now? <laughs> Yes, you. That's for you. All right, hey man, you got. Hey, let me. You know I don't like to talk much when we play. You know that. Man. <laughs> but you know that dream in the back of your head. Oh, do I have your attention now? You know the dream you can't even tell your wife or your friend or your families. And it's that dream, and you're like, hey, you know what? I really want to be the rock in the next movie. I know, I know I'm 5'6 and 140 pounds, but I really think I can be the rock in the next movie. And then maybe someone back there was going, man, I'd love to be Mick Jagger, man. I'm 68 and I have no hair, but I want to be Mick Jagger, man. 
Well, the reason why I bring this up is not to bring up your shortcomings, but to bring up your strengths. Because in 1994, at 25 years old, I wanted to be a rock star. And all I had was being super good at basketball. <laughs> Couldn't sing. Some will argue I still can. <laughs> Couldn't write a song and couldn't play an instrument. But at 25 years old, 24 years old, it didn't stop me. And I met that man over there and he had more faith in me than anybody I've ever met. And that dream in the back of your head, if you want to be The Rock, if you want to be Mick Jagger, you can still do it. If you're not dreaming big as you can here in Disney World at Epcot, you are not dreaming big enough, brothers and sisters. Do you hear me? Here's proof positive right here. A little song, Against All Odds in 97, went to number one. It's called Fly. It goes like this. God bless you all.